So in my endeavor to become the best pickleball player I can possibly be, I realized that it's actually super helpful to have an extra set of eyes and get constructive feedback from players who are better than me. Dude, yours sounds so different. <laughs> oh my god. This is my friend Nick, and Nick started playing pickleball in February of 2023. And he's honestly probably the fastest learner that I know. Nick played competitive tennis in college and he quickly climbed up the pickleball ladder in just a few months, even making qualifiers against Ben Johns. In this video, I asked Nick to give me some pointers on what I can improve in. So three things that Nick really helped me in this session are return of serves, drops, and drives. This session was super helpful for me and I hope it can help you too. Special thanks to Hesacore for sponsoring this channel and making this video possible. So we don't want this part to be very rushed. We actually want it to be nice and controlled here. Yeah. So we're gonna load, it's gonna be nice and controlled, and then we're gonna come up and get ready for that next volley there. And what you'll see is that your next shot will be a lot easier because you've got a deeper, more penetrating return rather than one that pops up and sits up a little bit more. Yeah, that's on my back. I'm already on my back foot. Like when you're hitting the return, I asked him if like you're running while returning because that's what it looks like on TV when I see pros hit. There, it looks like this. Um, but you were telling me earlier that it's actually more of like a lunge into it. So yeah. it's like here, and then you say you load on that outside yeah. leg, and then you kind of lunge into it. Yeah. Versus more of a. Yeah. of that because uh -huh. you can be a lot more un uncontrolled if you're just you know running through and hitting it yeah um, but if you can slow it down at that moment of impact it's way better and you're more controlled with your swing and then you're just going to transition your weight forwards even easier as well like that happens so often where yeah. i'm like i think it's i need to hit hard because your serves are fast yeah. and you just got to time it a little bit better yeah. And that's shallow. Yeah, very that's shallow. That's getting driven at me or my partner. Yeah, so I mean, that's a very attackable ball. Uh, yeah. But now if you show me the one where you're transitioning forward. So now I'm gonna use more. Nick's tip. Okay, I mean, look at that, he's <laughs> landed it. That felt so right much here. better. Ridiculous. Look at that, he's landed it. <laughs> so another tip as well, if we're talking about pace and we're looking at numbers, so let's think of the number 10. So if I'm giving Ed a uh, eight serve, he needs to give me a two back and use my power. But you know, if I give him a three, then he's got to give me a seven back. So you've got to kind of match the pace uh, with the server so that it'll kind of get up to that round number there. Good. Oh, I like that, yeah, it yeah. feels better. It should feel a little bit more controlled and natural. Yeah. Okay, I miss hit down my paddle, but I felt my body weight flowing better. And you can notice as well that they're not popping up anymore. Like, although they're sometimes a bit short, yeah. the ball flight is way more low and they're kind of penetrating through more. Um, so you don't get ones that pop up and sit up for a drive as much. Yeah. So first I'll show the one uh, that is wrong here um, that I see a lot of players do. It's just going to pop up a little bit more. So next to that baseline. And yeah, now I'm, up. now I'm driving able, that ball. Yeah, yeah, he's able to attack me very well there. And you can see I'm, I'm too close to the baseline. I haven't got enough time to react or move forwards. Yeah. So and it's I'm just, just creating a very that. attackable ball because I haven't got much reaction time and I'm not moving forwards. And so now I'll show you the other one. Yeah, that's on my back. I'm already on my back foot yeah. on that one. And I didn't hit that very hard at all. I'm just using my body weight transfer and I'm rebounding Ed's power back to him. Cool, so the next thing that Nick taught me earlier in the drill, um, our drill session was drops. Yep. And my drops, some days they're really good. And I'm like, I can't miss a drop. I'm so on fire right now. And some days I'm like, I forgot how to hit drop. I don't know, I'm quitting pickleball. <laughs> Nick just showed me something that I thought I've never heard anyone talk about before, but um, it was hitting drops in front of you 
inside here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I was reviewing my footage in my last video, the survival drill, where I'm practicing surviving at the baseline. And I noticed how awkward I was hitting my drops. I'm always hitting it to the side of me. And I'm always like kind of dipping here. And I look like this when I'm hitting my drops. Like this in front of him. And he didn't look awkward at all. It's just buttery smooth. <laughs> so we're gonna hit a few drops. And I'm gonna kind of show that tip that Nick yeah. showed me. Uh, the main thing there as well is that Ed was kind of doing a drop more like a drive. So he was taking it from the outside and there's just too much that can go wrong out here. And he yeah. was taking too big a backswing. Yeah. We don't want any backswing though, because we're already getting a lot of pace from our opponent. Right. So keep everything out in front. We kind of shadow the ball, make sure it's in the right position. And then we just, we're just literally just hinging from our shoulder, locking our wrist and just pushing through the ball there. Yeah. And you can still generate topspin as well, just by coming up the back and the side of the ball a little bit as well. So it's almost like a granny shot. Like this, that one just feels so much better already. Right there. And it's almost like, kind of like a bean bag almost. Yeah, I mean, that's a great drop there. Yeah, these feel so much. <laughs> wow. <laughs> They feel so much easier to do. And I never heard anyone talk about this. Inside. Inside. Yeah, brilliant. So I'm like moving my feet. Really good. Wow. So one kind of key thing with the top spin is, you know, we are starting from that flat position there, but this is just a starting point. Um, so if we want to generate that top spin, all we have to do is just come around the outside of the ball a little bit and then come over at the end. Um, and the reason why is just because we can shape it more um, rather than just it be, you know, a flat one. And you can differentiate between the two, you know, you can have your flat one here and then if you want to hit that top spin, you just come around from the inside and just come over it a little bit as well. So that's how you get that top spin there. Oh, can you show that one more time? Yeah, sure. So just from the inside and just coming around it a little bit more oh. rather than that flatter one there. Which so is just what a, I was doing? Yeah. So that flat one that you were doing there was just yeah. kind of like that. Yeah. Then if you want that top spin that's going to be more aggressive, you know, you can just shape it a little bit more oh. and kind of go around that way a little bit. So it's a very similar shot, but there's just a subtle difference okay. in that we're just kind of shaping it a little bit. Um, and although it is topspin, you know, we're not actually kind of doing a topspin drive, you yeah, know. Yeah. We're actually carving it more from the inside and coming round over the top of it. So let me know if I got it right. Before I was doing kind of like this. Yeah, so that's your flat drop, which is great. Flat drops. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought I was doing topspin. Because I was like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's, yeah, you don't want to break that wrist. You want to keep oh. the wrist the same, but all we're going to do is kind of just turn it and come from the inside. Like this? Yes. So we're just going to come around just a little bit. And not it's going to over? No, not over. So here? Yeah. To here? Yeah. So we're just going to come around and then finish with it just a little bit over. So it's just here. I'm just lifting it just like that. Got my large follow through. Sorry. Oh, my bad. That's a good ball. Here it goes. I'm just pushing it. Pushing that ball. There we go. So that's kind of what the flat drop will look like. And now I'll start kind of brushing up and around the ball a little bit so more. So this one is your top spin? Huh? Yeah, this one will be the top spin drop okay. now. Oh yeah, those ones are deadly. Yeah, these ones are dipping. And if you look at it, the spin as well, some of them are actually getting a little bit of side spin, um, which is great because it has a very similar effect. Um, but yeah, it's just penetrating through a little bit more. Hmm. Yeah, that one has side spin. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. And these, these drops in a game, I know Nick could come forward on any of these drops. Oh, 100%. Because yeah. that spin that you do, it makes it dip faster. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm my head's point, pointing down. Yeah. I'm not going to be able to attack you. Yeah, and the difference as well is with the flat drop, it's going to kind of float a bit more. Yeah. So you're easily able to attack it. But when I hit that top spin drop, it's going to bite and it's just going to dip way faster and it's going to be a lot harder to attack it.
And so one big thing with the drive as well is what I see a lot of players do is they're just too rigid and stiff with it, you know. It's That's not cool. really loose um, and it just looks very stiff with it. We actually really want to utilise our body and create a coil motion where we're kind of ripping up on the ball and we feel like we're very loose as well. Um, so just feed me one real quick yeah. and I'll show you what the rigid one looks like. There goes the aeroplane. <laughs> So it's just very stiff, that first one. And you can see I'm not, I'm not really doing anything with my body or my arm or anything like that. And I'm actually hitting a lot of them face on. But this next one, I'll show you what you should be doing. So I'm gonna be turning sideways. I'm gonna be getting down, creating that coil and ripping up the ball and kind of whipping over the ball to create that top spin and that wrist lag as well. And also as well, you really got to utilize this left hand as well to create that engaging kind of motion and allow yourself to use your body weight and kind of engage and rip through the ball. Whoa, that's so fast. Yeah, that's as much as I could do. Oh, I ran my nipple. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> Love those nuggets. <laughs> All right, so now I'll kind of show you what they look like in sequence with the different drop and the drive as well, okay? That was a beauty. <laughs> so, that yeah, was kind of, so good. The main thing there as well is kind of have the same kind of setup from here. And then once I've got my arms ready, I then either transition into that drop here or I turn my body and I go into that drive. So same setup at the start, get my arms ready. And then I switch between here and here. Like when you're hitting these, Nick, you don't really, uh you're not really thinking about it anymore because it's kind of like just yeah. in your, kind of like riding a bike for you. Yeah. Uh -huh. So it's almost kind of weird trying to dissect how to ride a bike because yeah. you're like, wait, yeah, I guess I do push my right foot down then my left foot down. But yeah. for us, like kind of learning how to ride this metaphorical bike, we're kind of like, okay, here, here. Yeah. But I think as we keep practicing that maybe, Yeah. that kind of, becomes more intuitive and the technique builds on it. Yeah, and it's similar to the return, you know, you're loading on that back leg and then you're shifting all your body weight through onto the other leg straight ahead. Yeah. So it's just getting used to that pattern um, and things will get a lot more comfortable. Yeah, that's a ripper right there. Good. Yeah, really good. Yeah. Yeah. So you can just feel it as you're coming through um, and all that body weight is adding to the power of the shot. So rather than you know swinging harder with your arm, yeah. you're just allowing your body to do some work body now. Work. Yeah, exactly. Wow, thanks Nick, that's... I'm a 5-0, <laughs> <laughs> Hey, if you guys appreciate those tips, go follow my guy Nick on Instagram and YouTube. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys in the next one. Let's go.